Hey there, so welcome back. And uh, in the previous uh, lesson we looked at or video, we looked at how to create a Windows virtual machine. And now let's continue from there and see how do we access this Windows machine that we've created. Now, if you have been used to remote desktop and have been remotely connected to another Windows machine through RDP client, it's fairly straightforward, but you need to know where to find out the IP address of the machine. So this is the machine we left here. It says deployment is complete and you can go to the resources. You can click here. There's a um, notification window. It can tell you go to the resource or you can go directly from here on virtual machine and click on this virtual machine from here. And this is where you will see the virtual machine being visible. So click on this virtual machine. Now, first thing you need to identify is the IP address of this machine. Now, the documentation talks about, if you look at here, it talks about connecting and downloading some or going to the machine. The port number 3389 should have already been opened. And let me show indirectly here. Let it come back here. So if you look at here, there is a RDP, there is a SSH and there's a Bastion. So SSH is mainly for Unix connecting to Win Linux or Unix machine. RDP and Bastion are the ways to connect to the Windows machine. And Bestin is for both Windows and uh, uh, Linux, but Bestin is a little bit more advanced topic, which I'm going to cover in subsequent videos. There is a separate video, how to use Bestin, uh, which is a service that you use via HTTPS port, which is port 443. So we are going to use RDP here. Now, again, you can download RDP client here, but what happens is this is the public IP that you see. This is what we need. That public IP address might change. So rather than connecting, clicking here from this RDP, what I would suggest to you is make a note of this IP address. And if you're on Windows machine, you simply type remote desktop here. Remote desktop connection. So if you see here, just type remote desktop connection. This is an app by default comes on the Windows machine. Now, other thing is if you're in Mac, I'll cover that later. So you have two options connecting from Windows and then later connecting from PC. So I'll, if you are, if you're selecting on connecting from Mac, I'll cover that in a minute, but let's fast forward or fast forward and go to the Mac uh, here. But for Windows, let me go and look at the IP address. This is my IP address. I've just selected the Windows client here and I'm going to type here like this, um, my computer uh, IP address and click on connect. Now, if you struggle to connect, there are multiple issues or reasons why you are unable to connect. I'll cover that towards end here. And that's also covered in our troubleshooting section if you're unable to connect by doing this method. So here, if it's saying, do you trust this computer? That means I've been able to connect to this, uh, the server and the server has responses come back and saying that this is the remote desktop connection. This is my report. It's saying that remote connection could harm your local computer. Make sure that you trust the remote computer that you, before you connect. I've just created this machine. I trust this, so click on connect. Now I need to remember my user. So instead of creating, by default, it's giving me the my phone uh, like number. So I'll say, click on more choices. I'll say, use a different account. And then Azure user is the user which we created, Azure user and then the password here. So you don't want to use your, uh, the whatever is given default because that has, um, that will enter or give your uh, phone number, most probably whatever you've used in past. So it should be the user that you have selected and then click on, okay. Now it's saying the identity of remote host cannot be verified. Do you want to connect this? Uh, so. This is coming because the certificate which is given or signed on this RDP is self-signed, which uh, by default, it's it's not signed by an authority, uh, trusted authority, that's why you're getting this warning. It's safe to ignore that, click on yes. And now I'm logged in, logging in onto this machine that I've created just now. So it's successfully connected to this machine. What I want you to do is before we move forward from here, I want you to take a screenshot of under from here, go to the console, take a screenshot of this and also take a screenshot of this and post it in our WhatsApp group saying that you have done it. This way I know that you're making progress and it will also update me or uh, uh, it will also inspire our other members that they will also be performing these labs. Uh, so, so 
make it put it there in our whatsapp group now this is to connect on from a windows machine if you have a mac in order for mac you need to download an application called remote desktop client so go to mac and search for a client or tool called rdp in the search box you will see rdp remote desktop protocol you download that click on get and that on that rdp then we'll be putting my pc name instead of pc name you'll be typing the ip address that we got just now so just repeat again ip address you'll be getting by clicking on the machine and you will be you need to do the public ip address which is written here under public ip address this is the ip address you need and then rest all steps are same so you enter your ip address and then username password so the difference in mac is that rdp client that comes in windows by default that doesn't come in rdp uh, mac rest all things are same now if you want to reset your password you can go on to the user account and reset password so if you see here on my by default it has opened the server manager so let me close and cancel this from here and then parallelly it's saying i'll select the control panel if i want to if you want to reset the pay, uh, the password then rest all steps are exactly same as you do in windows machine because now it's the same windows machine but running uh, on azure cloud so you can go, go to control panel look for users um, user account and then change your administrator password if you want to so that steps are going to be same for this so that's pretty much about um, about installing or creating a virtual machine but i want to take one more step further which is how to install a web server and that we are going to do using a powershell on this machine so if you follow this guide it's saying we'll search for powershell so you go to start menu go to the powershell and type on that powershell that this particular command uh, if you want this is totally optional if you want to look at the web server and if you have to try out a web server so if you search this is here and i think you need to play a little bit here and you'll search it's slightly bigger and say power so it says windows powershell right click and say run as administrator here so it's i am saying windows azure user and i'm going to install this by typing this command here which is saying install windows feature and i'm saying name feature is web server and include the management tools in that that's a power powershell command hit enter so it's now collecting the data and it'll set up once it's done we go back to the public ip address get the public ip address and then i can access it because i have opened it over the internet i should a port number i think port number um, here uh, 18443 so i should be able to access it over the internet if for some reason if you can't if you forgot to open the port number 18443 you can still access it but within the machine itself you should be able to access it still doing it while it's installing web server let me tell you other things we are going to eventually delete this resource but troubleshooting is important now in certain scenarios you may not be able to access this rdp and there are certain issues or certain reasons in which you may not be able to access rdp number one is that the machine is down number two could be you're using the wrong ip address it's not a public ip address number three might be that port number which we saw 3389 is not enabled or not opened across nsg number fourth which is quite sometime i've noticed if you're using a office laptop or if you're using a if you have an antivirus installed or a a, a a firewall installed on your laptop or client machine that is not allowing port number 3389 the office pcs don't allow anything apart from 80 or 443 uh, so going out so it could be that 83389 is not allowed going out so maybe worth um, asking someone else your friend or colleague or from a different laptop um to see whether you can access that uh, rdp if not then there is a problem with from if you are unable to access it from another laptop as well which is which has outgoing port 3389 allowed then it could be that server side issue now so this is what's talking about inbound port uh, 3389 is allowed or not from the networking now sometime uh, you may see the black screen that could be that your um uh the system is heavily utilized you might need a bigger vm or you might be running some applications running so look at this error message on the resolution here apart from that if you hit any other issue which or you need help with you can reach out to our whatsapp group or ticketing system 
So if you look at finally, it's saying system is ready. Uh, so I'm going to look at this is my public IP and I'll open and say HTTP. I think it's on listening on port number 80. We'll see that if it doesn't work. So if you see now, I can access it over the Windows. I'm saying Windows Server in IIS Server or my web server is installed and configured and running here. So quick using PowerShell. Again, in Azure administration, we are going to do a little bit more PowerShell. Now, finally, before we go, one final thing is, as I said, if you have not yet done, take a screenshot and share in WhatsApp group. And finally, you make sure you either shut down the machine or delete the machine. Now, in order for you to delete the machine, you have two options. Either you select, you stop, you click on here and you can say stop the machine here. And once you want to start, you can start again. To delete, you can delete it from here. But deleting from here, it will only delete the virtual machine VM. But remember I said with VM, we also installed or created a IP address, a subnet and so on. So if you notice here, let, what I mean by subnet is, if you go to VNet, virtual network, it created a virtual network with this machine, which is K21VM win VNet. So we want to delete these as well. So if you want to delete everything, in one go, you go to the resource group and the resource group that gets created that we created when we're creating VM. If you delete that resource group, everything will get deleted inside that. So if you click on this VM win resource group, it will tell you what all resources are created inside that. So inside this, you have a uh, virtual network, there's a virtual machine, there's a public IP, there's a network security group, there's a network interface card, there's a disk, which is my operating system. All these are created for this virtual machine and I want to delete all of them. So I'll simply say delete resource group and I need to type my name of this resource group, which is K21VMWin and then click on delete and it will delete everything here. So this will complete your lab um, of creating a Windows machine. So just want to reiterate what we did. We looked at in the first part, we looked at the introduction. We looked at the documentation link. We also looked at the prerequisite, which is having Azure account. And then actually we created, installed a virtual machine of Windows. And in this video, we looked at how to connect from Windows. We also looked at briefly how to connect from Mac, which means you need a RDP client. And then if you want to reset password, which is fairly standard Windows method, and then how to install web server using uh, your PowerShell. And then finally troubleshooting, and then how to delete this resource. With that, this is Atul from Team K2 Academy. Perform this lab now, update in WhatsApp group, any problems, ask in WhatsApp group or ticketing system. And I'll see you in another video. So guys, if you also want to have a good job around Azure Cloud, then we have something really special for you. We have our absolutely free class on how to prepare for Azure Cloud jobs and certification. Under this interactive session, you'll be learning about top certification options in Azure Cloud, job opportunities, our eight week roadmap to learn, get certified and get higher paying jobs. So if you want to register for the same, all you have to do is just log on to k21academy.com forward slash AZ10402. You'll be seeing this kind of interface. Just click on book your free seats now. And after that, select event date, add your full name, your email address, your phone number and click on yes, save my seats now. Moving ahead, you'll be seeing this kind of link on the extreme right. You just have to click it, save it and I'll see you in the free class. Till then, take care and keep learning.